Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, Christmas is almost here. Yes. yes. But I thought I'd try and squeeze in uh, another video. I'm hoping to do one more after this, but uh, we'll see how things go. It's been really, really busy just finishing up things for work, and we've also been hit by various illnesses throughout the family recently as well, like coughs and colds and sickness bugs and you name it, we've had it. So it's been a pretty crazy time. But um, I wanted to do another video, reasonably short one today, just on Topaz again, because the last video that I did on Topaz Photo AI, uh, which I will link for you up in the corner, um, was very, very popular. Uh, not surprisingly, really, because Topaz Photo AI is incredibly impressive, and they have released a couple of updates for it recently, which has made it even better. Uh, the AI engine, as to say, is improved. Uh, it seems to be a lot quicker. Um, but what I wanted to do is just um, run through a few more examples using Topaz Photo AI, but also using Topaz Denoise, uh, which I find denoising is one of the best features of Topaz. Uh, yes, you can do sharpening and um, upscaling of the resolution and things like that. But I just wanted to go through the differences between Topaz Photo AI and Topaz Denoise, just to have a look at the unique features that each one has. After using the software for a while, I feel that Topaz Photo AI is a sort of a, a quick fix, as to say. You know, it looks at the image and basically does what it thinks it needs to do to it. If you need to have more granular control, then that's when the individual software programs like Denoise, Sharpen, Gigapixel, uh, all of those come into effect. So a lot of people have asked questions saying, is it worth just using Topaz Photo AI? The answer for that is no. I would recommend having all of them. Uh, I mean, the good thing with AI and what I use it a lot for is that it comes with a Lightroom plugin, uh, as I believe all the other ones do as well. But if I've just got a photo and I look at it and I think, oh, God, that's a little bit noisy, I'll just right click, open it, open it in AI quickly, get rid of the noise, and then bring it back into Lightroom again. So it's very, very quick and easy. Also, I believe that Topaz are doing another discount offer up until. I think it's the end of December, which is definitely worth having a look at. They're going to be doing 25% uh, off all their individual apps and also offering their image quality bundle, which I think you get everything uh, for 179.99, I think, which is an incredible discount if you take into account how much it would cost to buy everything in one go. So if you are interested in getting any of the Topaz products, then I would appreciate it if you could use the link in the description below. Um, if you use this, it does give me a small commission, which just helps to support my channel. And also, as many of you may know in the UK and probably other places as well, energy prices are going through the roof. It would really help to just uh, keep us warm and feed the kids <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, please uh, please do consider using that. Um, so without further ado, let's jump onto the computer, have a quick look at these two pieces of software side by side, just run through a few of the differences. We're gonna be using a few example images from a recent trip that I took to Edinburgh up in Scotland, which was amazing. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom Classic. Um, I picked out a few images from, as I mentioned earlier, on my recent trip to Edinburgh, which uh, if you haven't been to before, then I would highly, highly, highly recommend it, whether you live in the UK or not. Uh, it's an absolutely wonderful city. Uh, really, really incredible architecture. People are lovely. Food's great. So uh, yeah, go there if you can. So you can see the first image that I've got selected here is of Edinburgh Castle. Uh, I shot most of the images on this trip with my 55mm uh, Sony f1.8. This was shot at 1.8 and you can see that the ISO is 12,800, so quite high, um, even for full frame standards because I was shooting with my Sony a7 IV. And you can see that there's uh, quite a lot of noise in the image here, if we just zoom into 50%. So you can see all the noise here. Uh, it's sort of making all of these colors washed out and there's all sorts of sort of grain and all that sort of stuff there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do right click on the image and then go to edit in. And then you'll see here, because you have the Lightroom plugin, uh, you can actually open up either Topaz Denoise AI or Topaz Photo AI. So what we'll do is we'll do Photo AI first of all. Uh, yep. 
edit with, edit with Lightroom adjustments. I've opened up the shadows quite high on this image as well, just to sort of accentuate the noise a bit more. Um, when we open it up in this, it does zoom in as a default to 100%, which I generally tend to zoom it out a little bit more initially. So if we just come up into the area where we can see all this noise here, which is one of the worst areas. So we're going to see here that it's detected a subject there, which um, is probably because it's a sort of a point of interest, it, or it thinks it's a point of interest, um, but you can uh, refine this subject if you want to. So you can subtract from it, so we can just take away bits of it, or we can take all of it out if we want to, wanted to, uh, just adjust it accordingly like so. So I don't really see any need for that to be affected and nothing else to be affected. And there we go, okay. So there is also detected as medium luminance noise. So if we pull this across, you can see that it's got rid of most of it, but not a ma not all of it, okay. So this is a, a sort of a case where AI is, is, isn't perfect. Of course it's not perfect. You know, every, every single image is different. So what we can do here is we can maybe change this to strong and then see the difference that that makes. So you see in the bottom left hand corner here that it's removing noise. So we'll just wait for it to do its thing. It is reasonably quick. Uh, obviously it would depend on the, the sort of computer that you have, but, uh, but yeah, I've always found it to, uh, to, to work very quickly considering the amount of, uh, of, of stuff it's doing in the background. So um, now if we pull this across, you can see that's a much, much, much better result. That's incredible. So you can see that all of this noise is just going, all right? So that's a much, much cleaner image. Uh, if I drag this back again, you can see sort of a 50-50. So you can see nice sort of clear sky here as, whereas as opposed to here, it's very, very sort of grainy and patchy. And then there's a few other uh, sliders here. So the strength is basically how much noise reduction it's applying for you. And then detail is quite a good one. Um, this is obviously quite a detailed image. There's a lot of detail in the, uh, the roof tiles here and up in the turrets at the top and all that sort of stuff. So if we just pull this, in fact, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more. Let's come up here. Now you've got to be very careful with a detail slider in any piece of software because you don't want to over accentuate it. Um, but if we just pull this detail slider up to say 55 and let's see the difference that this makes. There we go. So you can see that you've got a few little artifacts that are being created from this, but this is remember zoomed quite far in. So if we come back out again, and when you zoom out and zoom in, it does have to reprocess it again, which is fine. So we'll just wait for that to do its thing. And we'll pull this across just so we can see the original and then uh, drag, drag it across to see what it's done after increasing the detail slider. So we pull that across. And I think as a zoomed out image, that looks pretty impressive. And I don't think anyone would notice i mean i can't see any artifacts up there now at all but if you're not happy with it you can either click on reset to autopilot settings or you can just reduce this down a bit more uh, this little white line is where the autopilot is so I just click that and then it will take it back to uh, to where it was before um, change that back to strong and then there are other things that you can do it hasn't sort of uh, recognized that this image requires any sharpening uh, but if you wanted to add sharpening then you can so there's tons and tons and tons of different options that you can, uh, you can choose from. And then obviously you've got the resolution enhancement as well. So if you've cropped into an image or you've shot the image on a camera with a smaller sensor, uh, you can always increase the resolution. Um, you can double it or quadruple it if you really wanted to. So, uh, so yeah, at the moment it's doing a sharpening thing now as well. So we'll have a quick look at what that does. Uh, we're not focusing too much on sharpening on this video. It's more about the sort of the noise reduction side of things. Um, but you can see here that that has given a very, very, very impressive result. I mean, if this is, if this is the first time for you seeing Topaz products, then 
what have you been missing out on? <laughs> it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, so yeah, let's um, let's close that image down. And then what we'll do is we'll go on to the next one here, which was taken at the airport on the way back. Now for this one, I did use my zoom lens. So this was taken furthest out, 24 millimeters. Um, you can see here ISO 25,600, because it's an F4 lens as opposed to a F1.8 lens. Um, and we are noisy, 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 noisy. It's a mess. So, uh, I mean, it was one one twenty fifth of a second uh, handheld this one through the glass. I tried to uh, sort of cover up any reflections and what have you. So let's open this one this time in Topaz Denoise. OK. Just to show you the difference in the settings and, and what you can do. So again, I'll do this as a force of habit now, just zooming out a bit. Um, so let's go to an area with some detail in it, just like so. All right, so this is uh, it's very quick denoise. Um, obviously, Topaz Photo AI is having to look at a lot more things, um, but the uh, the engine on this one is very 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 quick. So it's already um, detected severe noise. Um, we've got the AI model that we can switch on, which will automatically. Uh, recognize that um, the good thing that you can do is you've got different ones here so you've got low light clear standard is just as is and then raw which is basically if you've imported a raw image it will it will include that as well but what I like about this is you can actually can click on compare and it will show you four different results from each one okay so you can see an overview of, uh, of each one of them which is uh, which is really 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 good so to get back to it we just need to click on uh, split view and it will take us back to the split view and then we can take a look at the results so if I just drag this across you can see that it's done an absolutely fantastic job of removing that noise um, and again you do have a number of different other options so again you can reduce the amount of noise reduction you can enhance sharpness so if you do start to see any artifacts or anything like that you can just reduce the sharpness very slightly uh, and then see what sort of result that gives you. So you see here it's updating here. And there we go. So you can see it's not quite as sharp. So I probably increased that ever so slightly. Um, and then here um, you've got the added addition of being able to recover original details from the in it image. So if we pull that up, um, we can look down here that it's made the, the text on here slightly more readable because when you're doing all of these adjustments it, it, it does sometimes muddle up the the pixels ever so slightly uh, but what i generally tend to do if i'm doing a sort of a, an in-depth edit on a photo uh, what i'll do is I'll, I'll do one with a low amount of um, noise reduction or sharpness enhancement and then i'll save that and then i'll save another one and just open them as layers in Photoshop and just bring back a few more details, but generally you don't, you will not, you very rarely have to do that. Okay, and uh, then on this one you've also got color noise reduction that you can uh, you can introduce. So color noise is basically going to be when you see colored little specks all over your image. It normally happens um, at sort of very very dark sort of astrophotography images, things like that, uh, and this is a great feature to have. And that's not available as far as I'm aware. I've never seen it in Topaz Photo AI. So um, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier on, um, before we started the sort of the screen uh, recording about you know do you just need Topaz Photo AI? And I say the answer is no. Um, I think it's worth having the three pieces of software that Topaz offer: so Sharpen, Denoise, and Gigapixel that will cover any every single instance that you need in more granular detail. Topaz Photo AI is also worth having. Again, depending on budget, you know, it can get quite expensive buying all of these different pieces of software. So you need to look at how often you're going to be using them and which ones you're going to be using as well. Um, but Photo AI, as I say, is an absolutely incredible uh, add-on for a quick fix in Lightroom. So, so yeah, I mean, I think the possibilities of, of this software is, is absolutely incredible. The, the other great thing is as well is that you can do batch editing in here as well. 
So if you import multiple images, they'll all come up at the bottom here, and then you can set them all to AI model if you wanted to, see what sort of results they give, and then you can change the settings from here. So you can see on each image what's been applied to that specific image, and then you can change them as you, as you see fit from there. So let's just do one more, just for the sake of it. Uh, we'll close without savings, we don't need to save it. And then let's bring up Lightroom again. And then we've got this image here of our plane arriving. We had a bit of a nightmare because we were due to fly back the day before, but it started snowing at Gatwick. So we had to uh, turn the plane around and uh, we'd already left and we had to land back in Edinburgh again and stay another night and another day, which is not the end of the world because it's, uh, as I say, it's, uh, I could think of, of uh, worse places to be stuck in. So with this one, let's go back to Topaz Photo AI and see what that can do. Here we go. So just going to zoom out. You can see here that it's detected a subject. Okay, so it's detected the front of the aircraft here. So we're going to leave that detected. Um, so it's sharpening the front of this area here. So again, if you wanted to uh, refine that, you could add to it if you wanted to. So you could include more um, and noise. It's detected medium, luminance noise. So let's pull this across. And there we go. So it's done something a bit funky with these lights here. So let's change it to strong. There we go. So we change it to strong and that sort of blended in with the lights a lot better. Um, and you can see straight away that, I mean, this was an incredibly noisy image um, and it has got rid of pretty much all of it. Uh, if we come out to zoom to fit. And of course there are, you know, we can always play around with the settings. We can, we can increase the detail setting. We can reduce the strength of the noise reduction and so on and so forth. But there's, uh, you know, if you've got an incredibly noisy image like this, many people look at it and just, you know, it's not the best photo in the world, but, uh, you know, say for example, it was a photo of uh, a, a bird flying at high speed or something like that, that you had to shoot with a high ISO, um, that you think, oh, damn, that was such a great image, but it's just too noisy. Um, software like this can, can completely just come and save the day. So you can see here that the result before and after there is night and day. Okay, so I think you'll agree that, you know, this is something that's definitely worth worth looking at and um, let's head back for some final thoughts well there we go another video as you all know by now I'm a massive 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 fan of Topaz I think they're an absolutely fantastic company what they're doing what they're producing uh, the updates that they're offering when it comes to support and bug fixes and things like that they're always really really on the ball so yeah I can highly 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 recommend getting you know one if not all of their products as I mentioned earlier they've got a really 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 good offer at the moment for their whole package you know, it's a good investment I appreciate it's Christmas time at the moment so you know we're uh, all watching the pennies but from a professional basis this software is a must-have so um, again if you could use the link in the description if you are interested in getting any of the Topaz products I would really appreciate it and that just leaves me to say very 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 Merry Christmas to you all um, as I said, hopefully I'm going to get time to do another video, but if I don't, I hope you all have a really, really good one and all the best for 2023. It's going to be a busy year next year, so uh, I'll be doing hopefully quite a lot more content. And yeah, that's it from me. Have a great one.